tried to get the Clintons to, uh, you know, pony up uh, some sort of statement even, uh, which they never were able to receive. And and Rockefeller said that there's just no way that the government, number one, is ever going to say anything, even if they had any sort of materials to disclose. But he didn't think they did. You know, and I, I absolutely agree with him. I mean, here we're talking, you know, 20 years later. I would also think if someone with his level of financial authority and power couldn't get to the bottom of it, a politician beholden to private industry to fund her campaign is not going to fare any better. Beholden, I think bent over is, is more accurate. That's the whole political thing here. Even Donald Trump, to run for president is going to need one and a half billion dollars. I don't know what he has. You're saying he's really only one and a half billion dollars. That's like right. One and a half billion dollars to stage a campaign. And there are people out there who say that his claims of being worth 10 billion are nonsense, oh. maybe a couple of hundred million. That's why he doesn't disclose his taxes. Regardless, every political candidate has to, as you say, bow down to the money people. Uh, no, bend over. Big difference. Well, I didn't want to be as graphic. You have this thing about anal physicians. Well, if you're a politician like Hillary Clinton, taking all that money from Wall Street and all the, uh, the big packs and the big lobbyists, she's bent over backwards. How's that? Well, she's learning new positions. I couldn't, I couldn't uh, argue with that. Uh, it's a lot of politicians. I tell you. Meanwhile, the Kepler telescope has doubled the number of exoplanets it's recorded, and more and more of those planets have been discovered, more and more possibilities of extraterrestrial life. Of course, it doesn't mean right. here. More, more Fermi's paradox seems to be uh, correct. And that means? Come on, Gene, you know what Fermi's paradox is, don't you? This is a national radio show we have a couple of dozen radio stations they don't know about all this stuff you've got to answer oh, for them not well, for there's Gene trillions and trillions of, of stars out there so there's got to be uh, Googles or quadrillions of planets and so with all those planets out there and all those star systems out there we have yet to detect even the slightest hint of life that's the paradox the universe should be teeming with life we should have radio signals bouncing all over for seti to pick up or uh which <laughs> that was said tongue-in-cheek um there should be some sort of sign of life out there right you would think with quadrillions upon quadrillions of planets in the universe, we should have some indication of life, right? Well, we don't. That's Fermi's paradox. So to speak. I agree. Teeming with life, but we don't see it. Isn't that strange? Or maybe life is more of a rare commodity than we seem to believe. Or maybe the universe changes as we perceive it. The reality changes. So as soon as we discover the possibility of exoplanets, there shall be more of them. How's that for reality? Hey, whatever, you know. Um, I just hope people aren't holding their breath because they're going to turn a really dark shade of purple before uh, before anything out there lets us know that they're there or we happen to stumble upon any sort of significant evidence. I'm hey, holding I, my I, breath I, right now. I hate to be a naysayer. <laughs> I hate to blow bubbles in your fruit punch out there listeners but hey it is what it is and it ain't what it ain't well what it is it sounds like we're <laughs> we're going soul here what it is well, this week we have another I guess fairly conventional look at UFOs and UFO reality with a fellow named Preston Dennett. Now, Preston Dennett wrote an article or two for my magazine, Caveat M Tour. Back probably, oh, so he's been around forever. Well, no, it says here he started in 1986, so he's a relative newcomer. Oh, okay, only 30 years. 
Yeah, 1986. In fact, the same year my son was born. Right. So he's been around for 30 years. That's forever in my book. Well, be that as it may, what's interesting about it is, like a lot of us, he either reads something about the subject or has an experience or is in the proximity of people who have an experience. So his official bio says Preston Dennett began investigating UFOs and the paranormal in 1986, when he discovered that his family, friends, and co-workers were having dramatic, unexplained encounters. Oh, boy. So he was surrounded by it. Well, we're just going to have to ask him about that. Going to be question number one. He also has a book out called Not From Here. I'm just trying to remember if I ever met him. Okay. Just trying to figure out if I... I think I did meet him back in the mid-90s. I'm just trying to remember. But maybe he knows. We'll ask him. He's author of a new book called Not From Here, Selected UFO Articles. And it's got some strange titles here, like Conversations with Extraterrestrials, Phone Call from an Alien, UFO Don't Shoot, Alien Zoo. Now, the only zoo I see around here, well, I don't want to get back into politics. We have Preston Dennett coming up next with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. I know that a lot of our listeners are interested in UFOs, the issue of giant skeletons found in America, paranormal investigations, and what the top researchers think about such topics. One online magazine has been presenting such unusual information since 1985. It is Alternate Perceptions Magazine at apmagazine.info. Use their search function to find articles on just about every topic imaginable. That's apmagazine.info. Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. I'm Nick Soboleski, a select quote agent with a true story that could save you hundreds of dollars a year. A woman named Linda just called. Her husband, Ray has a $300,000 group life insurance policy, but is changing jobs and can't take it with him. Well, I impartially shopped the highly rated term life insurance companies we represent and found Ray, who is 41 and takes medication to control his cholesterol, a 10-year, $500,000 policy for under $26 a month. That's almost twice the coverage for less than half of what he had paid. If SelectQuote hasn't shopped for your life insurance, you're probably paying too much. For your free quote, call 1-800-403-4885. That's 1-800-403-4885. 1-800-403-4885. Or go to SelectQuote.com. We shop. You save. Get full details on the example policy at SelectQuote.com slash commercials. Your price can vary depending on your health issuing company and other factors not available in all states. Would you like to receive two hundred fifty to one thousand dollars cash per day? Go to richmoneyrich.com. No website, no selling, no explaining. Just take these simple two steps and go to richmoneyrich.com. You can be generating cash in the next twenty four hours simply using this system. Good news is it runs on one hundred percent autopilot, and you don't need any experience to get started. It's easy. Get your share of easy riches and go to richmoneyrich.com. That's richmoneyrich.com. Go now. Brought to you by the Conservative Investor. Current returns not indicative of future results. Hi, Peter Vaccaro for ParanormalDate.com. Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? Now you have a chance to change that by signing up for free at ParanormalDate.com. This incredible dating site puts people of like minds together. People who are interested in the strange, the unusual, mysteries, ghosts, UFOs, and the afterlife, and so much more. ParanormalDate.com was developed for you, people seeking a viable alternative to the other dating services. You can join for free by going to ParanormalDate.com, and if you decide you like it and want to connect with people, use the code GEORGE for a substantial discount. 
Mark Rawlings, president of ParanormalDate.com, says so many people hunger to share their experiences about the paranormal, the unexplainable, or the afterlife, and so much more, and this is the source for them to meet and share that common interest. So sign up for free at ParanormalDate.com, ParanormalDate.com, and use the code GEORGE if you decide to connect with someone you like. Looking for that edge during those intimate moments? We see many ads for enhancement, but the side effects include death. At GCN Team, we should change the Healthy Body Brain and Heart Pack to the Healthy Libido Pack. The brain and heart are not the only organs that require a healthy vascular system. For proper blood flow at the right moment, go to GCNTeam.com or call 877-878-4203. That's 877-878-4203. That's 877-878-4203. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. So I was saying to Preston Dennett, and I think he just remembered that he once wrote for my magazine, Caveat mTOR, I was saying before we got started that when we do a show like this, we try to avoid all extraneous sounds. You know, we don't want anything to indicate that we're anything but disembodied voices. Of course, there are some people who take exception to that. This is certainly an interesting way to introduce Preston Dennett to the Paracast audience. How come you haven't been on the show uh, before? What's up with that? I have no idea, but I'm I had really to say, well, what about Preston Dennett? I, I remember, I think I, I think I talked to you on Facebook or something, and said, you know, have you ever been on the show? You haven't. Let's get you on the show, and well, we finally did. Yeah, well, I appreciate the opportunity. I love talking about this stuff. I'm really passionate about it. Been doing it a long time, but yeah, thanks for the invite. Now it says here in your bio that you first became interested in 1986, which is the birth year of Grayson Steinberg, my wonderful son, but there's no coincidence there involved. But in 1986, people around you had out getting all sorts of strange experiences. Can you tell us how you discovered this? Did you see something strange or just talking to people or what? Um, No, I never saw anything growing up. Very skeptical of this subject and I thought my family was and pretty much everyone around me. It turned out that they were keeping secrets from me Um, about their encounters and how it all unraveled is I heard this report in the news about this setting over Alaska. I'm sure you know about this case. Uh, Japanese commercial airliner was followed by a UFO for 40 or 50 miles. Yeah, really, really good case. Uh, Radar returns and everything. They never didn't say anything like that on the news. It was just very tongue in cheek. They laughed nervously about it and moved on. But I thought, my God, this pilot is out of his mind if he says he's being followed by a UFO. I thought he was, you know, seeing a reflection off the ice cap or on drugs or something. That's when I asked people at work about it. And the lady who I worked with, you know, for, gosh, five or ten years at least, I knew her very well. She's like, oh, yeah, me and my whole family, we watched this light, this object darting back and forth over the San Bernardino Mountains when we were camping. I'm like, you kidding. You've got to be kidding me. She's like, no. And in walks Dorothy, who I'd also worked with for years, and she's like, oh, I had a UFO sighting with my best friend and my mom. It followed us home from the library. She says, you know what's weird, Preston? It takes us five minutes to get home from the library, but somehow it took an hour. And, of course, that's a red flag, as we know now. But So this is what I was jumping into, Um, full-on face-to-face encounters, abductions, missing time, hybrid babies, all within my circle of family, friends, and coworkers. That's pretty interesting. And, of course, this is all pre-X-Files, so we can't blame it on uh, some sort of cultural meme propagation here, or can we? To a certain extent, probably, but, uh, I mean, this is before Bud Hopkins' book became a bestseller, Missing Time. This was before, you know, Intruders, before, you know, Whitley Strieber had come out with his book. Well, why don't you give us a thumbnail sketch of uh, some of the claims by friends, neighbors, uh, associates, and that sort of thing? Uh, it, was it all grouped together in the same time frame? Were, were you all 
in the same basic proximity to one another? Uh, give us, you know, set the stage and then give us kind of a thumbnail sketch. Right. No, it was pretty much from a wide variety of areas and times. And, uh, you know, not good news. This really hit me like a ton of bricks. I found out that my brother um, had seen a metallic object with colored lights on it, a dome on top, was hovering, then started darting back and forth. His two friends were there, and they chased this thing for like 10 or 20 miles across the San Fernando Valley here. Um, and uh, could not explain it. Uh, and I ended up interviewing all three of them later. <laughs> They passed several other cars who were also chasing and watching this object. So, I mean, there's one case. Another guy, let's see, uh, my sister-in-law, she said that she was out. Well, she had two sightings, actually. She had a sighting over Van Nuys Air Force Reserve Base with two friends where they watched these glowing lights um, hovering back and forth. I ended up interviewing them. And she also told me, she says, you know, I saw something. I don't know what it was. And she proceeded to describe this really amazing face-to-face encounter with gray type et in short she was walking by stag street elementary school and saw what she thought were two children wearing masks or something it was late at night and she's like well that's weird and why are they bald and they're wearing jumpsuits and she walked up to about 10 10 feet away from them and they turned and kind of swiveled and looked right at her she's like oh you know these are not children um they had big bald heads large dark eyes a green jumpsuit with little Mandarin collars, and uh, she described it vividly. And she said she didn't want to panic, so she just walked away as fast as she could. Well, did this coincide with uh, a wave of activity? Have you talked to Ann Druffel about this? Uh, what does her log say? Uh, was this all in the same time period in '86, or? They were most of these were in the '70s and '80s. Yeah, there was a few cases I uncovered that were earlier. I wasn't able to link them up to any particular UFO wave. Um, th- there was a later a UFO wave in Topanga Canyon, right. which, was, which was enormous. But, uh, right, which this, led to her book. Right, right. But uh, no, this, this is just, I found out that really... It was over yeah. a time period then. And, and then you just happened to find out about all these stories once you found out about one and kind of opened the floodgates, it sounded like. Yeah, you know, I think the thing is, people don't talk about this. I always tell people, if you're skeptical of UFOs, I I challenge you to actually ask everyone you know and trust, people that you know are not going to lie to you, and ask them, have they ever had an unexplained experience? You know, leave it open. Don't necessarily say UFOs, because sometimes people don't even realize that that is, is what they're seeing. And I will bet you that people you know Within your circle of family, friends, probably had some really dramatic encounters. No. Well, so how did that change your thinking? I mean, what what did you do at this point? Did you become an investigator or did you just start collecting stories or or become active out in the field? I mean, how did that impact your thinking? Well, it was, you know, I was scandalized. This was, like I said, not good news. I couldn't believe it. This was not taught in schools. And the more I began to research it, the evidence was showing that it was real. So I started reading the books. Um, I started subscribing to magazines. Um, Before I knew it, I was doing formal interviews. I just really had to find out if this was real or not. And it didn't take me too long to figure out that it was. I joined UFO groups. I became a field investigator. Um, I wrote an article for the local paper outlining a couple sightings. They put it on the cover. Wow, you know, this is amazing. Now, let me ask you a question here because you've written so much material since 1986. Did you work as a writer before you got into this? No, not really. I had, you know, written, tried to write some science fiction stories, was not really able to do it. So I kind of gave that up. Um, But I, you know, went to college. I was very interested in science and astronomy, anthropology, things like this. So that's mostly what I was studying. Let's do our break here and we'll continue. We have Preston Dennett, and by the way, he has a book, a collection of essays out called Not From Here. And we'll talk about some of that in further segments with Gene and Chris. You're in The Pericast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. 
Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let Reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call Reputation.com at 1-800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771. This is Holly Thomas, Group Vice President of Cause Marketing for Macy's. Our company is working together with the March of Dimes through March for Babies to raise money and awareness about the serious problem of premature birth in the U.S. That's why Macy's is committed to raising funds through our employees, customers, family and friends to improve the health of moms and babies everywhere. Won't you please join us in March for Babies? Start a team today at marchforbabies.org. Are you tired of commuting to a job that makes someone else rich, working harder than ever, but getting nowhere? Do you hate spending hundreds of dollars every week on daycare, having someone else raise your children? With our opportunities, you can start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss, work from home, and live a happier life. At Be The Boss Network, you'll find hundreds of work-from-home opportunities that you can literally start today and be earning money as soon as next week. Go to freedom106.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss. Get out of the rat race. Work from home. Go to freedom106.com right now and change your life today. That's freedom, the number 106.com. Go to freedom106.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You be the boss. Go to freedom106.com. Are you worried about your mom or dad living alone in their house? Hi, I'm Joan London. Listen, I know how difficult it is to find senior care for someone you love. That's why I recommend a free service called A Place for Mom. They are the nation's largest senior living referral service. Call A Place for Mom today. To receive free information on senior living communities in your area, call A Place for Mom at 1-800-704-6182. A Place for Mom offers free one-on-one -on -one advice from local advisors and a personalized list of senior living communities you can visit. If you have questions about senior care for your mom or dad, there's a place for answers, a place for mom. Call a place for mom in the next 10 minutes to get your free ebook on financing senior care as well as free information on senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-704-6182. That's 1-800-704-6182. This is a life-changing message for anyone with sleep apnea who is on the go and tired of dragging around a big, bulky home CPAP device. MiniCPAP.com now offers a portable device that's as small as a soda can and weighs less than a pound. For even more freedom, you can add a battery that's as tiny as a deck of cards. It's called the Transcend Mini CPAP, and right now you can try it risk-free for 10 days by calling 1-800-945-9289. Transcend is the world's first portable mini CPAP device. It gives you the freedom to sleep in total comfort anywhere you are. Our smallest and most advanced portable design ever. Transcend is so small and so light you can fit it in your briefcase or purse to use anywhere you go. It's FAA compliant too, so you can even sleep comfortably while flying. Enjoy the freedom to sleep comfortably anywhere. Call miniCPAP.com now for your 10-day at-home trial. 1-800-945-9289. That's 1-800-945-9289. This is Jerome Clark, author of the UFO Encyclopedia and other books. You're listening to the Paracast. We continue with Preston Dennett, but let's continue with something else. News of something else that we have to offer you. It's called After the Paracast. It's our second radio show. And what's it all about? Well, I was going to say, what's it all about, Alfie? But it's not. What's it all about, Chris? What's it all about, Preston? It's about a special subscription package we offer where we give you After the Paracast podcast. We give you the ad-free version of this show, better quality audio. So when I'm suffering from the sniffles, you can really hear it like I am now. We also give you some show transcripts. We've got people volunteering to do more of those. A lot of new features coming. 
To learn more, go to plus.theparacast.com. That's P-L-U-S dot theparacast.com. We're talking to Preston Dennett, and he's telling us how he first got involved in UFO research back in 86 when he learned that people around him had those experiences. It's almost like it was deliberate that you learned this and suddenly you're dragged into this field kicking and screaming. Did you ever feel you were being manipulated? I wondered about that, and I still wonder about that. You know, I grew up in Topanga Canyon, and what is the chances of a giant UFO wave happening literally right over where I lived? I had just moved out into the San Fernando Valley right after, right when it occurred. But And the number of coincidences are well, at least, at least stacked you weren't, up. At least you weren't camped in a tent in your parents' backyard in Topanga Canyon, like, what the heck's his name, David Serrata, when an orb... I think came in his tent and, and said it was Jesus, and uh, you're a man on a mission, David. At least that didn't happen to you. Boy, I'd hate to see what you, you'd be like now. <laughs> you never know. Uh, the whole UFO phenomenon does have a lot of really high strangeness to it. Do you know uh, Serrata, uh, having grown up in the same canyon? <laughs> no, I've met him. You know, I do know him, um, but I didn't, growing up, no, I did not know he lived there. <laughs> Personally, if that. I knew he lived there, I'd move. <laughs> well, you know, it's I mean, interesting can... that we both grew up in the same area and became – Well, again, I'm not sure if he grew up there, but his parents lived there when he had his supposed uh, Jesus as orb experience in the backyard when he was there living in a tent. I seem to remember all these details from quite a number of years ago when we were trying to interview him. And uh, because he wasn't all dressed in white, he was very uh, reluctant to be interviewed. And, of course, anybody in video knows that you never have your talent dressed in white because it screws up the white balance and makes it really difficult to uh, to get a good uh, interview with somebody. But anyway, I digress. So Topanga Canyon, uh, let's see, who else lived there? Uh, I think Bob Dylan, didn't he have a house up on um, the, the – Oh, there was a bunch of musicians and actors. Right. The guy from uh, Ro- Robin Williams. Right. He lived there. Donovan. Trace Torme was there for many years. The Eagles, Woody Guthrie. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. It's, it was a pretty interesting place to grow up. You started writing when you got involved in UFOs. What is your day job? I do bookkeeping, medical billing company, and it uh, pays the bills. It's excruciatingly boring, but I uh, love the people. And, you know, the job's not bad. It's not really my passion. I really enjoy doing this. Don't make a whole lot of money at it, but uh, enough to kind of pay for my habit. Well, at least it keeps you out of trouble. What do they think of you at work? You're just the quiet guy with the secret life or what? <laughs> They're very accepting. Um, I think that people are, are often a little bit surprised, but uh, the knowledge spreads pretty fast that if you have had an unexplained experience, if you've seen a UFO, yeah, the bookkeeper over there in his little office is the guy to talk to. And I've gotten a number of really interesting reports from people at work, actually. I remember when one lady, really a nice friend, I still talk to her. She, she no longer works there, but her, her name is Connie. And she walked into my office. And at that time, I had these little statues of various ETs that, from a gift that someone had given me. And, uh, you know, four or five of them. One of them was a gray and she sees it and screams. She's like, ah, you know, what is that? She's pointing to it. And I'm like, that? You know, what do you think it is? She says, I don't know, but I saw something just like that right after I had my baby. And she told me this really interesting encounter, you know, where this gray type ET came up to her window and uh, was staring at her baby. And she jumped up to protect her baby when this force pasted her to the bed, held her down. And this ET just kept staring at her baby, trying to get it through the window. Now, this is a window that doesn't open, so I don't know why it didn't just you know, walk through the wall like they supposedly can do or what have you, but no, it just stood there, stared at the baby for a good you know, few minutes, and then walked off. It scared her so bad, she ended up moving out of that house. Well, I certainly wouldn't want to visit that house. You know, I was thinking about this, Chris, and maybe it's because I'm a hermit, and that is, I think I've only been in and around a haunted house exactly once. All right, that brings oh, yeah. brings silence. Do pray tell. For a brief period of time, nothing special. I didn't see anything unusual. I think phenomena passes me by. That's a problem, weird stuff. 
It doesn't happen to me. I think you scare it away if you really want to know the truth. Yeah, well, I, I've been seeking it out, you know, hunt, hunting down in UFO hotspots. And I have to tell you, when I started investigating this stuff, I had not seen anything. But right after I started, I started seeing UFOs, not regularly, but certainly I've had a number of encounters over the years. Right. Maybe what you should do here is tell us about some of the more significant encounters that you've had anything you know something that really has some some meat and potatoes to it not just lights in the sky what do you think is the most unusual experience you've had with ufos um well there's been a few that are clearly unusual i remember probably the one of the earliest ones i was driving home from my sister-in-law's having you know just talked about ufos intensely for hours and uh suddenly this little ball of light an orb drops down out of the sky and is hovering right in front of my windshield, right about a foot, and it's darting back and forth a couple of times. And I'm looking at it going, what? You know, thinking that's not a bird. It looks like a golf ball. What is this? It's glowing. And uh, it kind of swoops down a little bit and goes straight up through the canopy in the trees and up into outer space. I mean, that's how it looked. And I'm like, whoa, you know, what was that? Didn't talk about it, kind of forgot about it, actually, um, for a while, but I still remember it. But I'm going to say the best one. Now, I was interviewing this lady. I'll call her Wendy. And she was having these extraordinary encounters. She said that she had not only seen UFOs, her neighbors had seen UFOs, her family. She had a lot of witnesses to support her story. She said she was having abduction experiences that were fully conscious. Um, a couple of times she'd wake up during an abduction and say, you have no right to do this to the, these greys, ETs. Say, so take me back. And they would take her back to her room. And so just a lot of really intense experiences. And uh, she's, I'm like, if everyone around you has seen a UFO, I want to see one. She says, okay, I'll see if I can talk to the ETs telepathically and see if we can set up a sighting. And so I've been through this before, so I wasn't really too, you know, e sure anything was going to happen but i she's called me up and she says yeah they're ready um here's the time and place that we go and this was right off the uh 210 freeway here in pasadena just this little dirt road you're not even really supposed to park off the freeway but we did i took uh, her wendy my sister-in-law and uh, my nephew and all four of us were tromping up this dirt road those two fell behind so i was just with wendy when we reached the crest of this hill and I tell you, she grabs my arm, and right about 50 feet away from us was this giant sphere. It was covered with golden lights. It was about 20, 30 feet off the ground, about as big as a house, large, perfectly round, and just beautiful. Absolutely unexplained, totally silent. We're screaming and jumping up and down. I could not believe it. I mean, it was enormous. And this thing just hovers there. Um, and slowly starts to move and then moves very quickly around the side of the mountain to a place that we had no chance of following it. Um, and we're like, oh, wow. I mean, that was absolutely unexplained. Let's continue with this account in our next segment. With Gene and Chris, you're in The Paracast. <laughs> for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Conspiracy Journal is your number one source for the hidden world of the weird and strange. We bring you thought-provoking and controversial material for free-thinking individuals who are seeking what is really going on in our world today. Some of this material may adversely affect you. Other pieces are meant to enlighten. Either way, be prepared to be intrigued by such things as the reality of UFOs, ghosts, strange creatures from time and space, hidden conspiracies, time travel, Nikola Tesla, suppressed technology, and a whole lot more. You can find out more by visiting our website at conspiracyjournal.com. There you can sign up for our free weekly newsletter sent directly to your email address. Find out what they don't want you to know.
so you've got to take a state construction license exam or certification. Can't decide on what books or what chapters to study? Discover right now how you can eliminate unnecessary books and wasted study time. At ContractorExam.com, our study materials zero in on state-required test topics in an effective, multiple-choice format. So whether you're a plumber, electrician, general contractor, or other construction-related trade, ContractorExam.com will help get you prepared. Visit us at www.ContractorExam.com today. This is an alert. If your business or church is building this year, you're about to pay more than you should. This could mean thousands of dollars more for your office, retail space, church, or warehouse. A general steel building can save you as much as half the cost and time of similar conventional construction. And we're offering rebates of up to $20,000 to help you build today. Call General Steel for free information that could save you thousands. Call 866-91-STEEL. 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 We use mobile devices right against our bodies every day, but growing scientific evidence has emerged showing serious health risks associated with exposure to EMF radiation emitted from these devices. The solution is Defender Shield, the most effective mobile radiation shielding ever developed. Defender Shield blocks virtually 100% of EMF radiation from cell phones, tablets, and laptops and starts at just $64.99. Buy now at DefenderShield.com. For 10% off, use promo code GCN. DefenderShield.com, the worldwide leader in mobile radiation shielding. Dangerous blood clot device alert. If you or a loved one had an IVC filter placed to prevent blood clots from traveling to your heart or lungs and suffered an injury, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. The FDA warns that IVC filters may cause serious complications such as heart or lung damage, internal bleeding, and even death. These dangerous blood clot devices can break and the metal fragments can travel to your heart or lungs causing serious injuries. If you or a loved one suffered organ damage or other injuries from an IVC filter, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Act now. Time is limited to file a claim. For a free consultation and free information, call Injury Help Desk at 800-478-1507. 800-478-1507. 800-478-1507. This is an advertisement. Paid non-attorney spokesperson. InjuryHelpDesk.com is responsible for this advertisement. Principal Office, Las Vegas, Nevada. Water is the single most important thing your body needs, so you want to be sure it's the best for you and your family. Since 2005, thousands have depended on Berkey Purified Water. The Berkey Guy provides the lowest priced filtration systems in every size. For incredibly delicious water now and in an emergency, get to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. 877-886-3653. This is Leslie Kane, and I'm with the Coalition for Freedom of Information, and you are listening to the Paracast. Preston Dennett has stories, and more stories, personal encounters, encounters about people that he's met. Tell us more about the one you started in our previous segment. Yeah, so there was this giant sphere. It appeared really close to us. I mean, this was closer than any aircraft that flying in the sky would normally get to you and at any rate i mean it was 50 feet away and just the most beautiful thing i've ever seen covered with these golden scintillating lights and we screamed and we jumped up and down i completely ignored my camera around my uh, neck there hanging there inches away and this thing just scooted away scooted away slowly at first and then darted around the mountain and uh, you know that's not the only ufo she's shown me she did that to me again so this proved to me that this lady is for real. And uh, yeah, I've had a number of weird sightings kind of, that's the best one, hands down. Over the years, you know, hanging out with people who are having these experiences, I think it rubs off on you a little bit. Yeah, I, I can kind of identify with that. You know, I'm, I've been looking through your, your bibliography here, or books you've written, and, and you've, you've really covered the state of California, probably more than any other investigator, uh, researcher, author. Um, you've written quite a number of books uh, on California, probably I think more than any other uh, paranormal or UFO author. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, but I, I, I love your um, UFOs Over series because I remember um, reading uh, UFOs Over New Mexico, and I think you have one on New York, California, California. Um, 
what's the other one? I think it was Nevada. Nevada. Yeah, Nevada, of course. Um, and you know, I th- for someone that that has has is as prolific as you are, you know, it's it's funny how um, you don't really attempt to create a cult of personality around yourself, and you kind of keep a low key. You've been on tons of, of TV shows. In fact, I think we were on a TV show together, weren't we? Um, uh, Jesse Ventura's uh, conspiracy theory uh, on the Skinwalker Ranch case, if I remember correctly. I think you were in that, weren't you? Right, yeah. And what did you think about that, how, how it ended up after 25-plus uh, re-edits and eight months of delay? And then what did you think of that final product when it came out? Well, you know, I've been on TV a number of times, and um, I'm always edited to a certain extent that I disagree with, because uh, they can pretty much make you say whatever you they want you to say. Well, in my case, they had me say the exact opposite of what I said, not once, but twice. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of what I'm hinting at. I, I mean, I know people who won't even go on TV because they're disgusted with it. I remember once I was approached by the news and they came to film me about this wave in Topanga and I'm showing them where this UFO landed and they're pointing to these gopher holes and they're said, are, are those the landing marks? And I'm like, no, those are gopher <laughs> holes. And then they said, well, would you stick your hand in there and say that those are landing marks? I'm like, no, I won't. <laughs> hey, what so, show was that? Warning. This was the news. Oh, <laughs> this the, the, oh your, your news guys. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So I'm, I'm like, that was, a, you know, and I've had, I've learned, I keep learning this le- lesson over and over again. Some shows t- treat me really well. I have to say Unsealed did a pretty good job. Yeah. But uh, even they, I'm like, hmm, that's not the question you asked me, and you're putting up a different answer. Well, so. One of the, <laughs> the least uh, offensive uh, shows, I think, and UFO Files as well. I found they did a, a fairly good job. But, uh, yeah, uh, I got in so much trouble after that Jesse Ventura show. Of course, we went through the trials and the tribulations here on the Paracast, I think, at the time. But uh, to be frank and quoted like that and to have a person say the exact opposite of what they actually said, I mean, I looked for every uh, angle I could to legally go after them. And unfortunately they were able to cover their, their butts uh, to a certain extent. And it it just wouldn't have been, it just wouldn't have been worth it. But boy, I got in trouble when you have CIA people and other spooky types (laughs) dogging you. George Knapp got all huffy with me and uh, it just uh, was terrible. Yeah. How do you keep out of the limelight and keep producing, uh, a good quality work like this. I mean, I, I you've been published by quite a number of different publishers, and and you seem to always have a book coming out. You've got what over twenty books now, and I see uh, uh, UFOs over Arizona is coming out soon. When when is right. the publication date for that? That should be the end of this year. Um, with by right. Schiffer Books, who's done a lot of the whole UFOs over series. Right. Um. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with them. I don't get a huge royalty really, or hard. Right. Not, well, you never called me and asked me about my my uh, sighting or sightings, I should say. Well, there's I'm, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm South Sedona. Way too many sightings to include in one book. Honestly, it's there are some. I mean, one hundred people report their sighting. So be, well, true. This so is true. And yeah. Phoenix kind of steals all the uh, all the limelight. But but yeah, to answer your question, you know, I became very interested in this subject. Um, Loved writing about it and didn't quite realize that, you know, writing books causes you to, to go on the radio and on TV and then you're speaking at conventions, and uh, which I'm happy to do. But, uh, you know, I have a full-time job, so this is something that I, is still kind of more of a hobby. Um, right. Certainly um, has the potential, I think. At some point, I probably will be doing this full-time. But uh, yeah, I, I've never really sought publicity. Um, I've never really, you know, tried to get on these TV shows or anything like that. Um, but there's been a lot of, I don't know, guidance or coincidence, and the path was just paved to getting this information out there. Right. Um, and uh, had some, you know, great success with uh, UFOs over Topanga. That book was probably one of my more popular. I think that was the first one I read of yours. 
Um, and uh, yeah, just have been going nonstop. I love it. You know, and one thing leads to another. It's not just about UFOs. I've done, written quite a bit about paranormal stuff as well. Right, right. And out of body. Right. Uh, I think you had a book on about out of out of body experiences, if I remember. Yeah, I mean, my first book actually was UFO healings, and uh, that was the first book to examine healing cases as a result of a UFO encounter. I planned on writing an article, but I ended up finding like thirty or forty cases. And wow. I thought, wow, you know, that's a lot. And so I surveyed the literature, contacted a bunch of researchers, and ended up uncovering about 100 cases. So, wow. So, uh, I, I mean, are we talking slam dunk medical evidence, uh, you know, or is this just all anecdotal claims? Um, it varies. There are probably 10 or 20 super solid cases, you know, with there's one where we have the before and after x-rays showing a cyst, then it, it's gone. And in the interim, there was a UFO encounter. It's, it's very hard to explain otherwise. Another good case, uh, let's see, was uh, Ventura Maceres, this guy in Brazil, who had a UFO shine this beam of light on him. And uh, he had some kind of radiation-type sickness at first, some burns. And uh, that sort of thing, but ended up growing uh, another set of teeth. Wow. Of all things, right? And wow. So he, was, he ended up being examined by like 50 doctors, a bunch of UFO researchers, government officials. And uh, there was a lot of evidence in support of his case, other witnesses um, and uh, things like this, landing traces. So it's a really good case. And there was in, a number in, of… And where was that, Brazil? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Brazil, of course, is famous for the Claris cases where I think up to 17 people were uh, reportedly uh, injured severely or killed by UFO encounters the mouth of the Amazon and on the island of Claris. So, yeah, some outstanding medical evidence and very dangerous. The chupas, yeah, I'm aware yeah, of Yeah, the chupas, well… <laughs> I had no idea there were some, uh, you know, miraculous healings down there as well. When when did that uh, particular case occur? Um, that was back. I'd have to look it up exactly. Late fifties, early sixties. Okay, so it was a while ago. Oh yeah, back when UFOs were more kind and gentle. <laughs> yeah, th things are evolving over the years. I think. I mean, in, initially, in the beginning of the modern UFO age, nineteen forty-seven, we have this huge super wave. And I'm going to say that that's pretty much unprecedented. Yes, we've had UFO waves throughout well, history. 73 I think. was pretty intense. But uh, I mean, starting then till now, to the present day, we've this has never really happened before in history. We've never had this kind of levels of UFO activity, and it seems to be escalating. I don't think the UFOs are going to go away. But what started out with sightings, now they're landing. I mean, they're taking people on board. They're crashing. <laughs> We're reverse engineering them. This whole situation is just. So, so you really think our government has crashed saucers or craft from uh, someplace other than here and that uh, we have been back engineering them? Have you seen any sort of evidence to support that? We'll have more with Gene and Chris and Preston Dennett. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> Visit GCNlive.com today. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a thrill a minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors. Classic science fiction at its best. Available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R O C K O I D S dot com. 
Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. Looking for that edge during those intimate moments? We see many ads for enhancement, but the side effects include death. At GCN Team, we should change the Healthy Body Brain and Heart Pack to the Healthy Libido Pack. The brain and heart are not the only organs that require a healthy vascular system. For proper blood flow at the right moment, go to GCNTeam.com or call 877-878-4203. That's 877-878-4203. That's 877-878-4203. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. With Gene and Chris in the Paracast, we're continuing despite weird behavior, extraterrestrial behavior on the part of Skype where the conversation continued for you, ladies and gentlemen, but I was completely cut off. <laughs> oh, why doesn't that surprise me? It doesn't. Why don't we pick up where we left off, Chris? Well, you know, this whole idea of whistleblowers and a lot of anecdotal claims. I mean, for every claim that's out there, I wish I had $100. I'd be really wealthy right now. Uh, I have not seen anything that supports any of these claims. Bob Lazar onwards. You know, people talk about Ben Rich saying, oh, we have the technology to take ET home. Where's the recording of that? I mean, I believe Dan Harzen when he says, hey, I was there and I actually questioned him later. But, um, you know, this stuff, I'm really into the mythology and the the mythologizing of this stuff and how, how memes are created. And, uh, you know, when I, when I hear about Corey Good and David Wilcock being P.T. Barnum or this Corey Good character or going back Dan Burrish and Pete Peterson and, you know, I could go down a whole list of names. And, you know, to be honest, Preston, I think it's all a bunch of BS. I really do. Nobody has any evidence to back it up. We hear the same meme being propagated, and then little bits are being added on, whether it's uh, Len Caston in the Serpo book or whether it's, uh, you know, the latest, uh, you know, Project right. Camelot bunk that comes along about every four or five months. You know, you say hundreds of people with a, well, impeccable credentials have come forward with evidence to support the assertion that we have back-engineered UFOs and that aliens are, are here. Why don't we have any, anything solid that, that uh, we could take to uh, the New York Times or something? It's frustrating, and, and uh, I hate it. Um, I totally agree with you. It's, it's kind of ironic. Here we have an no, opportunity. No, it's not ironic. For- it's by design, don't you think? The irony is we have these crashed disks, and we have – it's the best evidence you could possibly get – and what's, where's the evidence for these stories? There's, like you say, no physical evidence. You just said well, we have yeah. these crash disks. And, and let me, where's let me the start, evidence that we have them? Let me start with Roswell. It's got a lot of witnesses. It's almost impossible to dis- debunk that case. And it's we just have a bunch one. Of wreckage. We don't have a disk. Well, we certainly have a number of eyewitness testimonies that are pointing to this. And what I find very interesting is, you know, most people think, oh, there's Roswell, you know, there's Kecksburg, Pennsylvania, Aztec, New Mexico, and Paradise Valley, Arizona. Don't don't get Gene started on Aztec because (laughs) uh, we've got some real serious problems with Aztec. There are these, not just one or two of these things. These are being reported by all over the United States and across the world. So if there's one or two or three of these stories, but the fact is this is coming out of the woodwork. No, we don't have the evidence. It's apparently being covered up. That's what the, the testimony is showing us. But to ignore these eyewitness testimonies, I don't think that that's going to... Um, you know, like someone like an Anthony Sanchez, who's a fellow Californian, I think uh, from the San Francisco area or uh, Sacramento area. He comes up with this claim that he's got a Colonel X who uh, 
has the story of how they found the alien base at Dulce and how there was functioning technology left behind and how Colonel X can't come forward because he's in fear of his life or whatever the drama is. And when Sanchez is asked to produce the DD-214 military separation document, the document that he produces that was checked out uh, by investigators and researchers was presented to the San Francisco office where these documents originate. And they said, we want to know who this person is because this is fraudulent. It is not something that we we came up with, and, and this is a federal crime. And yet this guy is going to be speaking next week to the Hickory Apache at Dulce. I mean, this is a kind of cultural meme propagation that I kind of referred to, you know, towards the beginning of the of the segment here and of the show. But a lot of rumors and innuendo and tall tales don't make reality. And as far as I'm concerned, until we have some sort of doubting Thomas <laughs> quality, let me stick my fingers in the uh, in the in the the rivet you know, hole and and kick some tires here. I don't believe any of it. I think it's all a bunch of meme propagation and uh, and cultural programming. I, well, I really I think, don't. I think the evidence proving the reality of UFOs is in the public arena, and it's absolutely conclusive. It not only well, comes not, from... I'm not arguing that. I'm not arguing that there's not a real phenomenon going on, but in terms of our government or our military having actual physical evidence and proof of that, until we see some sort of indication that that is a reality... Uh, we have to assume that it's equivocal at this point. There is no slam dunk, unequivocal evidence that we have any sort of technology or hardware from any sort of extraterrestrial source. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. If you can come up with a single piece of evidence, <laughs> one, just one. Right, just one little ashtray would be all I needed. We, we do have it. It's not in the public arena. That's my answer, and I'm sticking okay, to it. We, first of all, who is we? Um, it's some aspect of the government. I don't think it's necessarily the senators and governors and things like this, but I think the higher echelons of the Navy and the Army certainly seem to be in the know with this. Uh, I think this whole situation is extremely volatile. There is, is an active cover-up. I mean, it's demonstrable. Uh, the, yeah. But, uh, yeah, as I was saying, I think the Air Force has really bungled the situation. I mean, there's case after case after case where they have tried to debunk cases, um, ridiculed witnesses, issued contradictory statements. John Hynek himself said that the whole project of Blue Book was not even interested in the more legitimate cases and would pay more attention to prosaic cases right. involving Venus or shooting stars. So, I mean, there is a cover-up. There's no doubt about it. The evidence is pointing towards the fact that we do have these saucers. I totally agree with you that there's no physical evidence supporting this. But at some point, the eyewitness testimonies stack up to a degree that it, it's mountainous. And you have to say, what are we going to do with this? What does this mean? Um, I think that we're doing the best we can to try and end this cover-up. But... Apparently, this subject is extremely sensitive, and they're putting a lot of effort into preventing people from getting physical evidence. Well, I don't know. I just go back to John Alexander's book, uh, you know, UFOs, uh, that came out about three years ago. Uh, not that I believe everything that John Alexander has to say. I mean, a good friend of his is Mike Lacchino, so I rest my case. But, you know, there is something to be said for the argument that, they found out that this particular phenomenon was nothing that they could really have any anything to uh, any effect on. They they it operated totally outside of any sort of parameters of control, which is what the government's all about control. And yet, it did not really pose what was determined to be a national security concern, which, if you believe. You know, people like uh, Bob Salas and Robert Hastings shutting down nuclear missile sites. So that, that would be a national uh, security concern. But the official Blue Book explanation was, hey, this isn't something that we're worried about. So, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Now, whether that is true or not, I don't believe it to be true. But if that is the attitude, then – or the culture, I should say – 
than you would think. Someone like a John Alexander or uh, people within the military industrial complex, especially in aerospace, would have come forward now with some really good smoking gun evidence. All we have is Bob Lazar, some weird ghost written uh, statements by uh, by Philip Corso. And everything that's come out that, that may have some relevance to it is tainted. There's nothing really concrete. We don't have that smoking gun individual or evidence or document that really does totally blow this thing wide open. And I don't think that's <laughs> for lack of trying. And I don't think it's by accident. Let's do our break. We've got Preston Dennett debating Chris O'Brien, I think. <laughs> With Gene and Chris, you're in the Paracast. Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. Are you worried about your mom or dad living alone in their house? Hi, I'm Joan London. Listen, I know how difficult it is to find senior care for someone you love. That's why I recommend a free service called A Place for Mom. They are the nation's largest senior living referral service. Call A Place for Mom today. To receive free information on senior living communities in your area, call A Place for Mom at 1-800-704-6182. A Place for Mom offers free, one-on-one -on -one advice from local advisors and a personalized list of senior living communities you can visit. If you have questions about senior care for your mom or dad, there's a place for answers, a place for mom. Call A Place for Mom in the next 10 minutes to get your free ebook on financing senior care as well as free information on senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-704-6182. That's 1-800-704-6182. This is an alert. If your business or church is building this year, you're about to pay more than you should. This could mean thousands of dollars more for your office, retail space, church, or warehouse. A general steel building can save you as much as half the cost and time of similar conventional construction. And we're offering rebates of up to $20,000 to help you build today. Call General Steel for free information that could save you thousands. Call 866-91-STEEL. 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 This is a healthcare alert from the Pain Relief Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee, back, shoulder, or ankle pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You don't have to suffer any longer. You can immediately qualify for a pain relieving brace at little or no cost to you by calling our 24-7 Pain Relief Hotline at 866-389-0620. Delivery is free and all paperwork is handled for you. If you are on Medicare and have knee, back, shoulder, or ankle pain, don't wait you can qualify to immediately receive a pain relieving brace at little or no cost by calling our 24-7 pain hotline now at 866-389-0620. Our representatives are standing by 24-7 to take your call and rush you your pain relieving brace at little or no cost to you. Shipping is free and all paperwork is handled for you. Just call 866-389-0620. That's 866-389-0620. Again, 866-389-0620. 
Worried about lead, fluoride, and other contaminants in your drinking water? Purchase a ProPure system during the Crazy May sale and get a free ProMax shower filter or water filter pitcher. Remove up to 200 contaminants with the Pro 1G 2.0 truly cleanable, reusable filter. We don't stretch our claims, we just deliver performance. Visit your authorized ProPure dealer for details or ProPureUSA.com. That's P R O P U R U S A.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. Ah, this is a debate. I'm just going to be the fly in the wall. I don't want to turn this into a debate. I'm you just already I, did. Just go proceed. Well, I'm tired. I'm tired of there not being any good, irrefutable, unequivocal evidence. All we have is a bunch of hearsay and anecdotal, you know, people saying, well, I, you know, was involved in this and I saw that. But they can't back those assertions up. Well, there are cases where there's, with radar evidence. Finally, the Washington, D.C. radar evidence, that came out. Right. The evidence for the there, is, there is a phenomenon. I will be the first to admit that. I have seen them with my own eyes. I videotaped them. I've gotten good videotape, actually. But whether the government is back engineering technology and hardware and whether – you know, of course, there's the argument, well, if you showed a cell phone to someone back in the 1900s, they would have a hard time with it, too. And I agree that they probably, if they do, and this is a big if, if they do have the technology, they don't know their butts from a hole in the ground on how to deal with it or how to figure it out. I, I mean, that would be my, my guess. And so that makes government embarrassed. And when governments get embarrassed, they go into denial, which ain't right. a only a river in Egypt. Well, if this is true, you know, that the government does have this stuff and is reverse engineering it, it's going to come out sooner or later. I can't imagine that it would be covered up forever, and it seems like we're trending towards that and that there are more and more people, you know, who say that they've been involved in this sort of thing. So it should be interesting to see what happens. I'm not sure that the government is going to come clean, you know, easily. It's probably going to be done kicking and screaming. But we'll see what happens. I don't think the UFOs are going to go away. We're going to have a UFO incident that's going to be undeniable, like like the Phoenix Lights, but, you know, beyond that. You know, we've been dreaming for that for so many years. And I don't want to sound like I'm old and jaded, but I'm old. So that makes me <laughs> jaded. So the thing is here, we've been hearing this dream of disclosure. We've been hearing these expectations that the government knows something. And certainly if there was a crash at Roswell, New Mexico as claimed that involved a spaceship, involved ET, there would be advanced technology. But then, you know, with that old argument again, what would they do with it until they can decode it? If we're talking about a civilization that's 500 or 1,000 years ahead of us, will they just be able to scrape the edges of that technology? What would they learn? And where's the evidence of it? I don't think that Philip Corso represents anything that's particularly factual there. I think there's something going on with the story because we're talking about somebody who had a distinguished record, but he certainly wasn't the bag man for secret alien technology that he brought to private industry. That doesn't even make sense. No, I'd find it hard to believe it was just one person. But what's interesting about Corso is no one has really been able to debunk his story. Whether it's true or not, you know, we don't know. I imagine there's a lot of other guys like him or holding on to secrets like this. Well, uh, you know, I beg to differ with you on uh, debunking Corso's story. Quite a number of details, you know, who, what, where, and when uh, didn't add up when people really dug into it and checked it out. For instance, uh, the Fort Wat Riley conundrum. There is plenty to um, scratch your head about with Corso. That's after you factor out Bill Burns' obvious uh, involvement. Open Minds uh, actually released and published uh, Corso's original manuscript. Yeah, you know, there definitely are some questions about the story, but I'm talking about his credentials. This is obviously some guy who was high, in high levels of government. Well, no, there's even question about that. He claimed he was, he was a member of the National Security Council 
or the the what was it not not the National Security Council, the uh, Joint Chiefs or something? No, he he was caught embellishing his uh, position within the command and control structure. I I, dis, I disagree with you there. I don't remember the exact details, but he named himself something that he was not. Yeah, well, I, I think the evidence for UFO crashes is not conclusive enough. I mean, we don't have the physical evidence, the craft in the public arena. And you won't? But not for a while, I don't think, but I think it's coming. All right, let I me... Do. I... Okay, so let's look at that. Roswell, I guess we can debate different conclusions, but I'll grant possibly it was a spaceship. Do you believe in Aztec or any other cases in terms of a crashed UFO? Um, I think that the... Kecksburg, Pennsylvania case is very interesting. It's got a lot of witnesses. Um, I think that the Aztec case, yeah, is definitely one of the earliest cases we heard about and uh, has a number of witnesses. The Ramsey's book, I found, you know, I, I read it. It's pretty interesting. We had the Ramsey's on the Paracast. And I've read the first book and there's a second edition, but I can't get Scott, to tell me what's been changed from first to second edition. I read the first part. It sounded the same. And I'll tell you, when you look through it, there are very, very few direct witnesses to anything happening in Aztec, New Mexico. The local population doesn't know anything about it. There's an engineer that Kevin Randall has been in touch with. And if you check Kevin Randall's blog, you can find his writings. And there really isn't anything that solid about Aztec at all. And it's troubling that we had two people who were considered to be con men running around the late 40s who fed the story to a gossip columnist, Frank Scully. With Roswell, at least something crashed. We can debate what it was. And certainly it seems to be possibly more than a balloon. There's no evidence prior to Scully. Exactly. There was no story prior to Scully at all. And I will tell you very honestly, I think Scott Ramsey has been perfectly sincere about investigating this case. And he spent a lot of time and supposedly he spent a lot of money. In fact, he gave Paul Kimball a lot of money to make a documentary about it, to film a documentary about it. But I have to tell you, I don't see the threads there that show anything happened at all that would be unusual. And you can disagree with me, Preston, but I think really, if you look at it carefully, it's smoke and mirrors. Well, I disagree. I mean, I think there are a number of researchers who do support the uh, Aztec case and uh, other cases like it. I mean, if you take out one case, there's still so many others. That's the thing. When I started writing this UFO's over various states series, I really did not expect to find UFO crashes in pretty much every state, but that's what's happening. Well, okay, uh, so let's bring that up. You mentioned UFO crashes in a lot of states, other than the ones we talk about in New Mexico, other than what might have happened in Kecksburg, Pennsylvania. In the United States of America, is there a significant UFO crash anywhere else and can you tell us the story? Before we do that, though, let me remind you to check the Paracast Plus at plus.theparacast.com. We have the After the Paracast podcast, the ad-free version of this show, and more. Plus.theparacast.com. We have Preston Dennett in the hot seat, I think. <laughs> with, with Dean and Chris, you're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. 
Join me, George Norrie, at Joshua Tree, California, June 3rd through the 6th for the Contact in the Desert UFO Conference, a weekend of exploration into ancient aliens, human origins, crop circles, UFO sightings, and new evidence of ongoing contact. Featuring Graham Hancock, Giorgio Sukalos, David Wilcock, David Childress, Doc Wallach, and Eric Von Donneken, and so many more. For information, go to contactinthedesert.com, contactinthedesert.com, or 760-365-8371. There's nothing more enticing and intoxicating than the finest meat cooking on an open flame. Freeze-dried meat from NewHarvest.com is U.S. grown, 100% all-natural with no extra fillers. Just grass-fed beef and free-range chicken guaranteed to stay fresh and delicious. Add New Harvest freeze-dried meats to your current food storage. You'll buy direct from the factory, not a third party, ensuring the best price and the highest quality. See all our products at NewHarvestFoods.com. That's NewHarvestFoods.com. Dangerous blood clot device alert. If you or a loved one had an IVC filter placed to prevent blood clots from traveling to your heart or lungs and suffered an injury, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. The FDA warns that IVC filters may cause serious complications, such as heart or lung damage, internal bleeding, and even death. These dangerous blood clot devices can break, and the metal fragments can travel to your heart or lungs, causing serious injuries. If you or a loved one suffered organ damage or other injuries from an IVC filter, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Act now. Time is limited to file a claim. For a free consultation and free information, call Injury Help Desk at 800-478-1507. 800-478-1507. 800-478-1507. This is an advertisement. Paid non-attorney spokesperson. InjuryHelpDesk.com is responsible for this advertisement. Principal Office, Las Vegas, Nevada. Hi, Peter Vaccaro for ParanormalDate.com. Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? Now you have a chance to change that by signing up for free at ParanormalDate.com. This incredible dating site puts people of like minds together. People who are interested in the strange, the unusual, mysteries, ghosts, UFOs, and the afterlife, and so much more. ParanormalDate.com was developed for you. People seeking a viable alternative to the other dating services. You can join for free by going to ParanormalDate.com, and if you decide you like it and want to connect with people, use the code GEORGE for a substantial discount. Mark Rawlings, president of ParanormalDate.com, says so many people hunger to share their experiences about the paranormal, the unexplainable, or the afterlife, and so much more, and this is the source for them to meet and share that common interest. So sign up for free at ParanormalDate.com, ParanormalDate.com and use the code GEORGE if you decide to connect with someone you like. All right, listen up, because this is the most important thing you're going to hear all day. What if I said you could make money flipping houses without any cash, credit, or manual labor? And what if I said you could do it part-time from the comfort of your home? Sound un believable Hi, I'm Preston Ely, and I'm going to prove it by sending you a free copy of my smash hit selling book, How to Get Rich in Real Estate. It sells online for $19.95, but I'm giving away free copies this week. To get one before they're gone, call 1-800-959-9582. I used to be so broke, I had my electricity shut off nine times. But I figured out a simple way to make money flipping houses without even breaking a sweat. Now I'm living the good life, and so should you. Listen, if you're sick and tired of stressing about money, this book could change your life. Hands down, it's the fastest, easiest way to get started in real estate. Let me prove it. Call right now to find out how to get your free book. When they're gone, they're gone. Call 1-800-959-9582. 1-800-959-9582. Hi, this is Don Ecker, and you are tuned in to the Paracast. Let me tell you what, you're going to hear stuff here that you probably won't hear anywhere else. Hear that, George Snorri? Oh, the hot seat occupied by Chris O'Brien. Look, I don't, you know, Preston, look, I, I don't want to come across like I'm dogging you or I'm, I'm getting on your case. I really admire your work, and I, I'm, I'm very impressed with you, a researcher and investigator. I just get so frustrated <laughs> that it comes across like badgering or or you know i've been accused of of many things on on the show but and some of that stuff violates every known language on earth go ahead chris don't take any of this personally just take it as as frustration and as uh, rhetorical questions how about that <laughs> no totally fine i get it i understand your frustrations i mean 
No, there aren't a lot of great cases. I think another really good one is uh, the Las Vegas UFO crash of, uh, I believe it was 1962, um, which I find a very interesting case because this was an object that was seen by a lot of different people across the United States. It came, I believe, was seen by witnesses in New York, straight down, was tracked by several different Air Force bases, actually ended up landing in Utah, causing a power outage, took off again and exploded north of Las Vegas. Pretty good case. A lot of eyewitnesses, but nope. Where's the craft? I totally agree with you. North of Las Vegas, so it happened to just crash in Nellis? <laughs> <laughs> well, near that area, yeah, absolutely. The what whole are the odds? Area 51 thing, that's a story in itself. I mean, This goes back to a book from Frank Edwards. He was a radio commentator, a book called Strange World. And I knew Frank Edwards very slightly. He didn't have a very long life. He, he wasn't a super healthy guy. But a lot of the story emerged from his book about what went on there. Okay, so people saw something, but we don't know who, if anyone, picked up a UFO and took it away. Do we? Well, I mean, it, it was investigated by Air Force Project Blue Book. Dallin Hynek was part of that. And uh, it was did cause waves within the military, certainly, we know that. There are articles about it and things like this. It's not just uh, Edward's word, by any means. No, Kevin Randall had a chapter on the subject that's posted online. In the end, what did the Air Force conclude about it? Um, as I recall, they issued uh, contradictory explanations, though the official Blue Book explanation in the end was Meteor, um, which I find absolutely ridiculous because I'm this thing turned, it slowed down, it landed, it took off again. And it's <laughs> clearly not a meteor. I mean, it was a drunk yeah, why meteor. Were th That's why I was doing that. A and meteor that, on a mission. It was That's way, right. way too slow. Um, I, it was tracked, I believe, at around 4,500 miles per hour, which is far too slow for a meteor. And they were chasing the darn thing. So, so what well, ended up, what dark. happened with it after all this? Um, well, reportedly, uh, I believe it was Randall who said he talked to witnesses who were there on the scene and picked it up and there were alien bodies and the whole deal. And they were carted off to nobody knows where. Wright-Patterson, Area 51, we don't know. Man, there's got to be quite a repository of bodies somewhere if all these stories, or even some of them are true. Well, if that there's one went to like Area 51, gallery. it was right there. It didn't have to go anywhere. Yeah, I, I'm hoping that this stuff is busted wide open one day. I don't know. I mean, if looking at various Air Force bases, you can see that they're definitely UFO magnets. Um, just going back to the book Clear Intent, which covers you know, a half dozen or more cases of these UFOs hovering over military bases and raising havoc. And uh, the Edwards Air Force Base story stretches back to the 1940s and continues today, where these objects are being seen over the base, causing complete chaos, um, hovering for hours at a time, even landing at one point, as Gordon Cooper, our astronaut, said that he saw a film of. So uh, definitely there's something going on there. Well, I'll grant that a lot of strange things are going on there, and we need to pursue it. But before we go much further, I'd love to pursue this book of yours, because we've done half the show and we haven't even discussed it. It's called Not From Here, Selected UFO Articles. In any yeah, case, and you have some unusual chapter titles here that I really wanted to discuss here and kind of get your basis for them. And we can go on. And that is with regard to the first article. And I don't know, you know how you pick these articles for this, were they written strictly for this book or just something you had written elsewhere and you felt they were appropriate? Oh, uh, yeah. These were articles I'd written for magazines over the years. And uh, having written a number of books, I've realized that a lot of my research you know, had been published in these magazines, was available for about a month and then gone. So uh, I started going through them, picking out some of my favorite ones, updating them, and uh, put together this book. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the first one. And this is where there's a lot of dispute about authenticity. Conversations with extraterrestrials. 
And over the years, especially since the 1950s, we have people who go around claiming that they have been in touch with E.T. They've met them in the desert. They've channeled them. They've been abducted and had conversations telepathically or otherwise. Amongst these stories, any that you find really credible worth further study? Well, all of them I found very interesting. Obviously, I wouldn't have included them. Uh, but what I found interesting is in, by far the majority of cases where people are having contact with ETs, they don't talk. All the witnesses really get is, you know, do not be afraid. We won't hurt you. You know, come with us. And that's often the extent of it. So this was kind of a collection of cases where pe people got a little bit more than that. Um, sometimes not much more. Um, I mean, the good case example is Travis Walton. They never talked to him at all. Pretty solid case. And uh, But no, he was not able to get a word out of them. For the most part, they're very tight-lipped. So these were cases um, where they actually gave out some information. Uh, one I thought that was really interesting uh, was this family I interviewed uh, here in Southern California who was having visitations by these gray type ETs. Um, they were very intent on trying to get the daughter to forget. She refused, you know, she absolutely insisted on remembering and they would argue about this. <laughs> And uh, they would ask her things about her job and about her relationships, about her work. And uh, she'd answer them and they would give her little predictions, of, like a raise or something her boyfriend would do. And so she was actually able to talk to these guys, um, did, as was her mother. Did they speak English or communicate telepathically? What? Um, almost always it's telepathically. I find it very interesting because I'm like, hey, well, the French ETs, they're speaking French. You know, there's cases where, you know, pe people are speaking Spanish with these ETs. They pretty much pick up or apparently seem to know the language or are speaking telepathically, and it's understood that way. Mm -hmm. um, the, the Ed Walters case was kind of interesting. They spoke to him in English, but they called him Zihas. Now, Zihas is the Spanish word for eyebrows, and he's got these really pronounced eyebrows. We thought, hmm. <laughs> So there, there's, I, I don't know. About that. <laughs> so yeah, they do talk to people, but for the most part, they don't. Um, in a number of cases, they give predictions. More often than not, these predictions don't come true. And in a lot of cases, the information they're giving is kind of pff, ludicrous or ridiculous or contradictory, not true. Go ahead, Chris. One of my favorites is uh, the Truman Bethram case. Uh, just it, 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 infinitely fascinating to me. Yeah, I think he asked him, where do you come from? And he said, oh, from behind the moon or something. Some ludicrous explanation. I remember in one case, these people were actually discussing with these gray type ETs who actually looked really human. And they asked, you know, why are you landing? And they said, well, we're here to help people, but we can't help people too much. You have to solve your own problems. And well, at least they're not trying to be like Michael Rennie and they stood still, where he says, you listen to us or we'll blow you up. We've got Preston <laughs> Dennett with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that too in Graphic Converter. Also print catalogs. Convert from so many 
formats I can't even list them. Download now to see if Graphic Converter is good for you, like one and a half million other users. Guess what? You could save money when you buy Graphic Converter. Use the coupon code NIGHTOWL. Use the coupon code NIGHTOWL to get a special price for Graphic Converter. Go to LemkeSoft.com. That's L-E-M-K-E Soft.com. LemkeSoft.com. L-E-M-K-E Soft.com. By now, you know that wireless technology like cell phones do, in fact, pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blocket Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality, American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. This is an alert. If your business or church is building this year, you're about to pay more than you should. This could mean thousands of dollars more for your office, retail space, church, or warehouse. A general steel building can save you as much as half the cost and time of similar conventional construction. And we're offering rebates of up to $20,000 to help you build today. Call General Steel for free information that could save you thousands. Call 866-91-STEEL. 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 No other network provides the level of customer service we do. When it comes to radio advertising, we are your one-stop shop. And no matter how big or small your business is, we can help. Email us at advertise at GCNlive.com and an experienced advertising executive will help you take the first step towards driving more customers to your business or website. Advertise at GCNlive.com. Easy, affordable, effective. I'm Nick Soboleski, a select quote agent with a true story that could save you hundreds of dollars a year. A woman named Linda just called. Her husband, Ray, has a $300,000 group life insurance policy, but is changing jobs and can't take it with him. Well, I impartially shot the highly rated term life insurance companies we represent and found Ray, who is 41 and takes medication to control his cholesterol, a 10-year, $500,000 policy for under $26 a month. That's almost twice the coverage for less than half of what he had paid. If SelectQuote hasn't shopped for your life insurance, you're probably paying too much. For your free quote, call 1-800-403-4885. That's 1-800-403-4885. 1-800-403-4885. Or go to SelectQuote.com. We shop. You save. Get full details on the example policy at slowquote.com slash commercials. Your price can vary depending on your health issue and company and other factors not available in all states. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. Hey, this is Marie D. Jones, the author of This Book is from the Future, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. So we've got talkative ETs, Press and Dennett. When they make predictions, the predictions don't always tend to be accurate. But isn't that used as evidence that they're not really true? Um, is that what's not true? That I the mean, claims it's... of contacts with ETs are not true based on the fact that they don't tell us anything that indicates advanced technology or knowledge and that the predictions they make tend to be wrong. And Well, that's not always the case. There are a number of cases. I mean, I myself was witness to a UFO that was a predicted sighting. So I know that this can happen. Well, how was it predicted? Well, I already told you the story where Wendy, you know, yes, asked yes. to contact the ETs. And they said they'd be there, and they were. Well, so cooperative. Yeah, I was amazed, because I've, you know, I've done that before, and it hasn't worked out. Okay, but when um, you have situations where the predictions are wrong, and where the claims are wrong, isn't that 
the case that you should suspect? Uh, well, you know, it depends. I think you have to take each case individually. There's a lot of red flags I think investigators look for that earlier used to not be well known. Now it's a lot harder because this phenomenon has really been publicized. But uh, it's pretty darn easy to tell when someone's telling the truth, uh, well, especially when you have multiple witnesses and unless they're you know, Oscar-winning actors, which is certainly possible. A lot of most, tricksterism going on. Most people don't want to talk about this. They really don't. You have to pull the, the story out of them. They really don't want to be ridiculed. A lot of them don't want any publicity. I have never accepted any funds in exchange for a UFO story or anything like that. That's just not how it works. People are absolutely relieved to find someone to talk to. It's, I often get a caveat. They say, I'm not on drugs. You know, I've never told this to anybody. I'm well educated. Um, you're the first person I've spoken to about this. So this sort of thing. People are really nervous. They don't want to be ridiculed. Yeah, that does kind of add to the uh, believability factor, uh, at least, you know, coming from someone that's interviewed <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of people out there in the field. Um, that is something that does carry some weight with me when people absolutely just say, look, I, I just have to tell somebody and I trust you. Please don't, you know, use my name. Uh, you know, don't give any indication of, of who told you this, but, but you know, I have to tell somebody. Yeah, I, I think people are looking for someone to talk to. I think this, is, this phenomenon is a lot more common than people realize. I remember I heard a quote from Jalen Hynek, uh, allegedly, that uh, he said one in 40 people have been taken on board or had an onboard experience. I thought to myself, oh, you are out of your mind. There is no way. That is way too common. Uh, this is pretty much when I first started my research, and that's what really got me going. I decided I'm going to ask everyone I know. And I didn't have to ask 50 people. I found five or ten people within my circle of family and friends and coworkers who had had a face-to-face -face encounter or an onboard experience. So it's much more common, I think, than people realize. Well, wouldn't that be an indication of that possibly we're dealing with something that's if not as terrestrial as we are, even more terrestrial than we are. Maybe the, the phenomenon uh, has lived here longer than we have, and maybe the advent of the modern age of, of UFOs occurred just after we started popping off nuclear weapons. Uh, maybe we have somehow put them in jeopardy because they're sharing the same ecosystem that we are, and some sort of nuclear exchange or nuclear holocaust could be as you know catastrophic and, and detrimental to their well-being as ours. Wouldn't that uh, be an indication that we're dealing with something closer to home? That would make sense, and I think there's some indication of that. Certainly, that's one of the most common messages that people get when they're taken on board. We're talking about abductees and contactees alike. Warnings of nuclear proliferation are right up there at the top of the list. Well, Alternative sources of energy, that's another one. Healing, but when ETs talk that's what they're talking about so yeah it's, i think it's entirely possible i'm not sure that that's what the evidence is really showing us because we see these ships landing and then they're taking off and they're going up into outer space so they're i don't know there are cases where people have seen them going into the ocean certainly I, i've done a lot of research on that recently yeah i wanted to talk to you about the big uh, supposed entrance it's right off santa monica there. <laughs> It kind of in your neck of the woods. I seem to recall reading an article uh, a couple of years back where you were commenting on some Google Ocean images that surfaced on the net. What do you think about that that whole idea of a sub-oceanic or subterranean possible uh, en entities or intelligences? Yeah, I'll, I'm neck deep in researching that right now. It all started pretty early on when I was getting ocean-going UFO accounts which I didn't you know, really pay much attention to uh, more than the others because UFOs are seen everywhere. But uh, I put a chapter in my book, UFOs Over California, ab about this. And that caught the attention of the History Channel. I went on Deep Sea UFOs 1 and 2, and this brought in a flood of reports. I ended up writing an article for Fate magazine uh, with the title, Is There an Undersea UFO Base Off the California Coast? I think that's because, what I read. Yeah, because by then I had 50 reports, at least, of these objects coming in and out. 
and some abduction cases where people were not being taken inside UFOs, but into what appeared to be an underground base of some kind. That was basically the gist of the article and uh, really caused a lot of attention. Then those Google images came out and it was pretty much precisely where the center of all this activity is. I've been getting a flood of reports since then. And yeah, I think there's definitely something going on there. Um, I'm not sure exactly what. There's either an undersea base or a parking lot involving uh, hundreds of UFOs. Well, we the Catalina, too. Uh, there's been reports for decades of objects uh, going into and coming out of the ocean there uh, off of Catalina. Yeah, some really amazing cases. Uh, I just found out of a case involving a group of Boy Scouts. Uh, this is back in the 50s, um, who all saw this object. And because I found that very interesting because a couple of years ago, I interviewed this other Boy Scout who was there with his friends. And he and they saw not one or two objects, not 10 or 20, but literally you know, dozens upon dozens of these objects. So there's a lot of activity there for sure. I wanted to bring up this next chapter you have in your book because it kind of relates conversations with E.T., conversations with extraterrestrials, and that's phone call from an alien. So I hear my phone <laughs> ring, my iPhone ring, which, of course, plays Hello, Goodbye by the Beatles is the ringtone. I pick it up and say, Hello, may I help you, or something like that. And someone says, This is E.T. What's really going on, seriously? Yeah, this is a bizarre phenomenon, and a really surprised me. As I'm sure you know, UFOs do have a sort of a tendency to affect electromagnetic equipment of all kinds. I mean, not only stopping cars on the highway, but uh, fuzzing up radios or televisions and things like this. And apparently there's this whole group of cases, the sort of genre of cases, uh, where people are claiming to be contacted through the phone. Now, I know how this sounds, but we are getting cases from, you know, major researchers like John Keel, uh, Ray Fowler, uh, and others. Whitley Strieber talks about an incident that he had where voices came through his stereo, and he held an actual conversation with these guys. Uh, Betty Andreessen, she said she received a series of calls from these ETs who were, would give her messages. Uh, well, and then there's a, the famous uh, phone calls to Philip K. Dick and... Uh, Jack Sarfati, back in the early 50s when they were kids, metallic voice would call and communicate with them. And I think there was another uh, several people, too, that were within that same sort of time frame of people that went on to have notable careers. Yeah, I, I find it fascinating because every now and then I run into this with the people I'm interviewing. See, it's very interesting because people will say, oh, these calls always come on the same day. And that's what happened to this other guy I was interviewing from upstate New York. He said, you'd get these weird phone calls where you hear these clicks and buzzes and things like this. And it was always on the same day. And uh, then one day, he, they actually contacted him through his cell phone. He would hear messages in his head saying, we're coming, we're coming. Um, the time is soon. And uh, very kind of telepathic type of thing. And then this is happening while he's driving on the road and he's seeing one of these UFOs following him and his cell phone starts ringing and he looks at it it says no answer and uh, he ignores it but finally he picks it up and uh, he answers it you know and, what uh, let's they, break right here and let our listeners figure out what's going to come next what did he hear Preston Dennett with Gene and Chris you're in the podcast <laughs> Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. As you know, neighbors, web hosting can be pretty cheap, but not all hosting is the same. 
DreamHost wins best of awards year after year. You get unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, and even the low-cost plans put your sites on high-performance SSDs. Want to know more about what DreamHost has to offer? Go to technightowl.com slash host. Once again, that's technightowl.com slash host. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. My dad was 59 when he collapsed from a heart attack late last year. Just this past August was when we spread his ashes on the St. Croix River. I loved my dad, but boy was he stubborn. He hadn't been to the doctor in over 25 years. His excuse? He simply couldn't afford it. He wasn't a rich man by any means. At less than $107 per month, libertyoncall.org would have been the perfect alternative for my father. Don't wait. Go to libertyoncall.org right now for not just your sake, but for the sake of your loved ones. Again, that's libertyoncall.org. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. At least we just answer this at the end of the next segment. You have all these TV shows ending their seasons about now, and some have cliffhangers, and you have to wait three or four months to get the answer to whether a lead character died or something like that. And then the series is canceled, so you don't know. Preston Dennett hasn't been canceled. But we've got to find out what was at the other end of that telephone conversation. <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting. He was right in the middle of this UFO setting, and this, his phone rings, and it says, no number. So he answers the phone, and he hears this funny clicking noise, and he says, it wasn't really like a mechanical click, sort of like... A clicking noise someone would make with their tongue on the roof of their mouth or something like that. And he said it was very rapid. And he, <laughs> and he, and he hears this voice says, the time has grown closer. And uh, so he hung up the phone and threw it on the seat and shortly later had missing time. Yeah, a number of cases like that. It's bizarre. Yeah. It sounds to me you've got a Killian kind of temperament in finding all these weird cases. That was part of the point of this book was to explore the more unexplored aspects of the UFO phenomena, the ones that have been shunted aside a little bit or ignored. Um, just the sort of weirder things that are going on. Because, I don't know, I, I think it's pretty interesting that ETs are contacting people this way. There's, contact takes place in a lot of different ways. In connection well, with can't. that, you have something here, a chapter called The Alien Clown Connection. Now, some people, of course, as you know, are afraid of clowns. There's something that can be quite sinister about them. So what is the alien-clown connection? Yeah, this was something that really surprised me, and I kept running into this with abductees who had this dread fear of clowns. And, you know, at first, I didn't really connect it to the phenomena. It wasn't until Bud Hopkins wrote about it and said that he had a number of cases uh, where People had this dread fear of clowns, and it's called chlorophobia, fear of clowns. And the first case that I had, which really connected it, was with this lady called Marcelina. And she said, yeah, you know, I have this fear of clowns. It's ever since I had this one childhood incident where this E.T. came, and I swear it was dressed up as a clown. And I'm like, really? <laughs> How, you know, and she says, I'm not sure, you know, maybe it was, maybe I'm making this up. I don't know. But uh, that was her impression. And it wasn't much longer after that, I was interviewing another lady who had a profound UFO sighting very close up and uh, probably more than just a sighting. Um, there were some kind of red flags that I looked for. And at any rate, she says, you know, I had some weird childhood experiences as well. That's another red flag. She said where people would come into her bedroom and she'd short figures and she'd hear them and get really scared. She said she has one memory of these figures coming in and 
instead of seeing an ET, she saw this Harlequin, this clown with a full on purple velvet, the little jingly jangly bells, the whole deal. And the next thing she knows, she's finding herself, you know, on a table being operated on, being cut by this surgical instrument. And uh, that's kind of where the memory ends. She says, I don't know what to make of this. But I uh, kept running into these kinds of cases. Really bizarre. Well, the clown is one of the holdover sort of last vestiges of the trickster from more ancient and medieval times. One of the last real vestiges of the trickster in the modern age is the clown. Yeah, I find that interesting as well. If, if the ETs are using this as a screen memory or sort of a disguise, this is kind of my theory, to uh, sort of reduce the fear factor. Well, it's not working because what's ending up is there's this whole dread fear of clowns and kind of permeated into society to a certain extent with you know killer clowns from outer space and serial <laughs> Wayne, killers. Wayne Gacy. <laughs> right? So I don't know which came first. I, mean, I After I wrote this article, a clown actually wrote UFO Universe, where the article was published, and wanted to sue me for defaming clowns, um, which you know didn't end up happening, obviously. But <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> but, you know, a lot of cases like this, and it's, honestly, it's not just clowns. There are people who are seeing these ETs dressed up in all kinds of bizarre costumes, wearing wigs, um, sometimes dressed up in pinstripe suits. Whitley Strieber said he had that happen to him. Uh, wearing cowboy hats, um, that's another. Uh, so, yeah, pretty interesting. I'm not sure why exactly they're doing it, and I'm not sure if this is necessarily related to the whole screen memory phenomenon where people see owls or deer or you know, wolves or what have you. They seem to be actually dressed up in these clothes. Um, so I've only had two what I consider to be compelling abduction claims out of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of reports that I've investigated uh, over the years. And this woman was in love with her ET abductor. And she was looking forward to the uh, occurrences when this entity would dress in a gold lame cape. And she loved it because it reminded her of Elvis. (laughs) (laughs) Ew. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not making this up. I mean, I, I'm pretty creative, but not that creative. <laughs> I just report the news. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, one, one of these days I'm going to do a study on this. What exactly aliens wear? Because um, for the most part, I mean, they wear jumpsuits, but we've got a lot of reports of crinkly aluminum type suits. A lot of reports where they're walking around in their birthday suit. So <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty interesting. I don't know. As long as they just kind of stay away from me, I, I think I, I'll I'll be more the happier. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And now watch what will happen. I'll wake up and I'll have, you know, Bozo the Clown uh, with almond eyes or something tonight. Oh, God, I just jinxed myself. <laughs> yeah, please don't dress up as a clown for me. I mean, I don't have a fear of clowns, but yeah. <laughs> let's just show yourselves as you really are. But- yeah. Hmm. Or like the, uh, what was it, the uh, the Vila Bolas case where she was in her birthday suit but turned him off when she was trying to get it on with him because she grunted like an animal. Right. <laughs> You're not talking about one of my old girlfriends, are you? Well, actually, I was, Gene, but I, I didn't want to, you know. Yeah, I, didn't I shouldn't wanna... have told you that story. Yeah. <laughs> I never told him that, that story. Long. I mean, I... I dated a lot of strange women back in the old days, but it never got that strange. Weren't impregnating any ETs then, huh? Well, I don't know. There might be some ET versions of me running around. I have to think about that. Are there any others of me? I just know of one. That's a frightening, frightening concept. Uh, Speak for yourself, my friend. Think about it. I mean, that's what they're all into, right? They're always collecting... Uh, eggs and reproductive material. We're not going to go extinct. We know that because there's, they've got to have enough material to create the recreate the human race. You would think. Yeah, well, yeah. That, that's a good question. Uh, here's a good question: Why do they still land and walk around picking up flowers and rocks like they'd never seen them before? 
Because they want. <laughs> yeah, why? Why are they coming light years to pick a flower? That's a really good question. But uh, they seem to be very interested in our planet. And uh, I think this is something that we see a lot of. Uh, maybe they're tourists. I think that there's certainly some possibility of that. But yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say. Why are they still examining people? Haven't they learned enough about us by now? Apparently, they're very interested in us and our planet. We've got some questions here uh, in our question bank where our listeners are able to post uh, questions for our guests at forum.theparacast.com. And um, here's a couple from Technomage. Um, as a field investigator, Preston, have you found that CE3 or Close Encounter of the Third Kind sightings are non-existent, or do you still encounter credible entity sighting cases today? Before he answers that question, let's do our break. We've got Preston Dennett answering your questions from Question Bank. He's also written a book of essays or selected UFO articles called Not From Here. And people say that about me, and maybe they're right. So we'll have more with Preston Dennett in our next segment. You're here with Gene and with Chris. You're in The Paracast. <laughs> If you're fascinated by UFOs, ancient aliens, archaeological mysteries, ghost hunting, Atlantis, and any other paranormal topic as we are, be sure to check out APMagazine.info each month. Since 1985, it has presented the latest research by top researchers like Andrew Collins, Brad Steiger, and many others, and contains interviews with such leading personalities as Jacques Vallée. Check, click on one of their banners and check out APMagazine.info. As you know, neighbors, web hosting can be pretty cheap, but not all hosting is the same. DreamHost wins best of awards year after year. You get unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, and even the low-cost plans put your sites on high-performance SSDs. Want to know more about what DreamHost has to offer? Go to technightowl.com slash host. Once again, that's technightowl.com slash host. Dangerous blood clot device alert. If you or a loved one had an IVC filter placed to prevent blood clots from traveling to your heart or lungs and suffered an injury, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. The FDA warns that IVC filters may cause serious complications, such as heart or lung damage, internal bleeding, and even death. These dangerous blood clot devices can break, and the metal fragments can travel to your heart or lungs, causing serious injuries. If you or a loved one suffered organ damage or other injuries from an IVC filter, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Act now. Time is limited to file a claim. For a free consultation and free information, call Injury Help Desk at 800-478-1507. 800-478-1507. 800-478-1507. This is an advertisement. Paid non-attorney spokesperson. InjuryHelpDesk.com is responsible for this advertisement. Principal Office, Las Vegas, Nevada. A good stove is at the top of the list for any serious survivalist. That's why you have to see the full range at Emberlit.com. Simple, elegant, but extraordinarily efficient. Available in titanium or stainless steel, the Emberlit line of stoves are ultralight, pack flat, and work great. Fueled only by sticks and debris. From emergency situations to long-term survival, Emberlit stoves are up to the task. Emberlit, the most convenient, easy-to-carry wood stoves on the planet. See them all at Emberlit.com. I'm Nick Soboleski, a select quote agent with a true story that could save you hundreds of dollars a year. A woman named Linda just called. Her husband, Ray, has a $300,000 group life insurance policy, but is changing jobs and can't take it with him. Well, I impartially shopped the highly rated term life insurance companies we represent and found Ray, who is 41 and takes medication to control his cholesterol, a 10-year, $500,000 policy for under $26 a month. That's almost twice the coverage for less than half of what he had paid. If SelectQuote hasn't shopped for your life insurance, you're probably paying too much. For your free quote, call 1-800-403-4885. That's 1-800-403-4885. 1-800-403-4885. Or go to SelectQuote.com. We shop. 
you save. Get full details in the example policy at slowquote.com slash commercials. Your price can vary depending on your health issuing company and other factors not available in all states. A good stove is at the top of the list for any serious survivalist. That's why you have to see the full range at Emberlit.com. Simple, elegant, but extraordinarily efficient. Available in titanium or stainless steel, the Emberlit line of stoves are ultralight, pack flat, and work great. Fueled only by sticks and debris. From emergency situations to long-term survival, Emberlit stoves are up to the task. Emberlit, the most convenient, easy-to-carry wood stoves on the planet. See them all at Emberlit.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. So, Preston Dennett, you're in the hot seat again to answer that question from one of our listeners. Go ahead, please. Yeah, absolutely. There are definitely current active cases. I get them pretty regularly. I just spoke with the lady who doesn't live in the United States. Uh, she, she lives in uh, Canada, I believe. And she's having this encounters with these gray type ETs. She says it's very friendly. They're teaching her about healing and she's communicating with them telepathically. And uh, But some of the cases take a while to trickle in. I, th- I think if you go to like the MUFON or the UFO reporting service, you'll see that there's pretty much a constant stream of reports. Uh, while sightings are most common, it takes sometimes a while for you know the bigger cases, entity cases, to sort of trickle down to me. So there's sort of a, a time lag there. But yeah, I think they're still going on. I haven't seen any slowdown of abductions like I've heard some people say. This stuff is definitely still going on. That's been an argument some people make that we don't hear as many of certain types of cases, such as close encounters, and also about abductions. So you're still seeing a pretty good number? Yeah, you know, like I said, it it takes a while. I'm gonna say, you know, I don't see any from this year, but I bet you next year, I'll probably get people telling me, oh, this happened to me last year. That's kind of what I mean. I still think, yeah, it's pretty active. I'm not seeing any marked change in that area, no. Well, speaking about that, Without Limits, uh, number nine, uh, has a question. Where have all the UFOs gone? In the 60s to the 80s, we were inundated with a laundry list of sightings, photographs, videos. Now, despite everyone having a camera in their pocket, the number of new major UFO cases with photo and video evidence appears to have fallen off. Even when there is a massive case, no one has a camera nearby like he gives the example of stevensville the o'hare airport uh case in 2008 if people are at an airport many of them who are traveling with cameras why can't they photograph a large disc covering over a major airport and what does this suggest to you well i think what happens is it's different from earlier times because the whole phenomenon has become saturated it's extremely popular on the internet people will photograph a ufo and Where do they put it? I mean, who do you give it to? Um, There are people taking photographs of UFOs, but photographic evidence is not as good as it used to be because it's so darn easy to fake. Uh, There are some really remarkable photographs of the Mexico City uh, sighting during the eclipse. That was back in the 90s. There are cases, photographs of the O'Hara flying saucer over the O'Hara airport. There are? Oh, yeah. There's photographs of the hole in the clouds, but I, I've never heard of any object. Uh, oh, yeah. There's a number of different photographs. I mean, if you can Google it, and you'll see, they'll come right up. Huh. I'll um, just so, have to do that. So definitely there are photographs out there. But uh, it's frustrating. I agree that to a certain extent, you're, the whole phenomenon is being handled differently publicity-wise. It's very difficult to get this stuff onto the mainstream news. Usually there's one or two sightings a year that might make it, but it's not like it used to be. Now, I just did a look here at Google, UFO photos at O'Hare Airport, and I found a few, but they're kind of questionable. That's what I'm saying is, what's, what's good about the O'Hare case is there are a lot of witnesses. It did cause some controversy. We do know that there were some maintenance workers and airport personnel who saw this stuff and were told not to talk about it. It created quite a bit of an uproar and that's kind of what made it I think get into the news and while the photographs you know 
they'd have to be studied by an expert, really. But if you can connect them to a witness and multiply witnesses, well, then you start to have a good case. A single photograph by a single witness is not good evidence anymore. I'm sorry, it's just not. Well, but the ones I looked crowd, at, the first two or three I looked at, they were a little too obvious if you get my point. I think Chris can tell you about that. I think if you get a crowd of witnesses, though, and well, okay, some of sure, if you, have a, if you have witnesses who say, I saw this and it looked this way, and then you have the photograph that doesn't show any obvious signs of fakery, you'd have a point, sure. Right. And that's that almost got to that point. Um, I don't think anyone's actually been able to contact these people who are photographing the O'Hare case, but uh, that would certainly make an interesting study. Well, and you would think that a photograph of a case that had that much publicity uh, would, would be produced right away. Um, and, and people wanting to uh, expose any sort of visual evidence that they were able to obtain, they would they would come out with it right away. I would think. Um, I could be wrong. It's when they come out two, three, four years later anonymously that I've I've got a bit of a problem with. Yeah. Well, the problem is some of the best cases get viciously attacked, and people are learning the hard way that going public has its consequences. When you've got a I mean, look what happened at Gulf Breeze. That divided the whole UFO community, as did yeah. the whole Billy Meyer case. Well, uh, Billy yeah. Meyer, of course, it stands to reason why. Just look at the wedding cake photograph. <laughs> That's I rest my case. <laughs> well, here, let's, let's go to some more questions before we run out of time. Without Limits has another question. And uh, since we were talking about skeptics jumping on cases... What are a few cases that you think the skeptics are just totally wrong about? Uh, give us a, a kind of a, your laundry list. Well, I mean, there's an enormous number of outstanding cases, and there are skeptics, and there are debunkers. I mean, for instance, the Travis Walton case was viciously attacked by Phil Class, and uh, who I think was a professional debunker. Uh, and yet, that case I think? think is outstanding. <laughs> It's an outstanding case. I mean, supported by lie detector tests and multiple eyewitnesses. So, you know, there are researchers who have backpedaled and uh, on cases. I still think the Roswell case is an outstanding case. There's just way too many witnesses. Uh, there are a number of cases. I mean, the Rendlesham Forest incident, that's another really good case. Uh, I think that skeptics, if... You look at the evidence that's out there and you objectively look at it. Look at the landing trace cases. Look at the, uh, angel, the angel hair cases. Look at the uh, radar return cases. Look at the animal effect cases, the electromagnetic instrument cases, the injury cases. The, a good example is the Falcon Lake case with Stephen Myshalek, who that case involved landing traces and also involved some outstanding medical evidence in that he, uh, he suffered from what appears to be some form of radiation sickness. He was examined by over a dozen doctors. His blood count dropped to very dangerous levels. And uh, just no way to explain this unless he was exposed to some sort of radiation, yeah. which supports Cash the story. Lundgren, too, uh, speaking of radiation cases. Yeah, so the, I mean, there's all kinds of outstanding evidence. And I understand skepticism. I used to be very skeptical of this subject. And it's really hard, I think, for people to swallow when it's coming along with Bigfoot and levitation and telepathy and invisibility and walking through walls. So it's a big pill to swallow. Right. Um, a big, nasty horse pill. Well, um, he asked kind of a reverse question. What are a few cases that the diehard believers are totally wrong about? Before we have that answer, Let's just reverse and break. Again, have another cliffhanger. Preston Dennett is telling us lots of fascinating tales. With Gene and Chris, you're in... The Barricast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. 
This is an alert. If your business or church is building this year, you're about to pay more than you should. This could mean thousands of dollars more for your office, retail space, church, or warehouse. A general steel building can save you as much as half the cost and time of similar conventional construction. And we're offering rebates of up to $20,000 to help you build today. Call General Steel for free information that could save you thousands. Call 866-91-STEEL. 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 This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Hi, Peter Vaccaro for ParanormalDate.com. Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? Now you have a chance to change that by signing up for free at ParanormalDate.com. This incredible dating site puts people of like minds together. People who are interested in the strange, the unusual, mysteries, ghosts, UFOs, and the afterlife, and so much more. ParanormalDate.com was developed for you, people seeking a viable alternative to the other dating services. You can join for free by going to ParanormalDate.com, and if you decide you like it and want to connect with people, use the code GEORGE for a substantial discount. Mark Rawlings, president of ParanormalDate.com, says so many people hunger to share their experiences about the paranormal, the unexplainable, or the afterlife, and so much more, and this is the source for them to meet and share that common interest. So sign up for free at ParanormalDate.com, ParanormalDate.com, and use the code GEORGE if you decide to connect with someone you like. Are you worried about your mom or dad living alone in their house? Hi, I'm Joan London. Listen, I know how difficult it is to find senior care for someone you love. That's why I recommend a free service called A Place for Mom. They are the nation's largest senior living referral service. Call A Place for Mom today. To receive free information on senior living communities in your area, call A Place for Mom at 1-800-704-6182. A Place for Mom offers free, one-on-one advice from local advisors and a personalized list of senior living communities you can visit. If you have questions about senior care for your mom or dad, there's a place for answers, a place for mom. Call A Place for Mom in the next 10 minutes to get your free ebook on financing senior care as well as free information on senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-704-6182. That's 1-800-704-6182. Hi, this is Dr. Joel Wallach, the Mineral Doctor. You've heard me talk about 90 for Life for years. 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, 2 fatty acids. You may not know this, that I've actually designed Arthur decks for animals. That's right. Your pets need 90 for Life too. Get this essential pet product by calling 877-279-9422. That's 877-279-9422. Again, 877-279-9422. Did you know that 900 diseases are connected to nutrient deficiency? Are you wrestling with high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, arthritis, or cancer? Then take a moment to write down this information. Hello, this is uh, Dr. Joel Wallach, the dead doctor. Don't lie. I'm coming to Knoxville to share with our church families why we have the capacity to live well beyond 120. See you in Knoxville. May the 18th, Dr. Joel Wallach will be at New Friendship Baptist Church, 1933 Texas Avenue, Knoxville. May the 19th, Dr. Wallach will be at the Holiday Inn, World's Fair Park, 525 Henley Street, downtown Knoxville. Call 865-684-9107. Hi, this is James Fox from Chasing UFOs. You're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Questions on the table, Preston. Let's have your answer. <laughs> it's hard to speak to you know a question like that because there are cases that divide the community. I mean, the Corey Good case is very popular right now. I've never heard of blue avians. I've talked to an enormous number of people and never heard of any ET like that. I'm not saying it's not true, but you know, these these people come along and I'm concerned that they're just trying to make a buck. I'm not saying that that's the case with him at all. You know, I'm just saying when you see a case that's absolutely unique and there's no precedent for it, well, I have to kind of take it with a grain of salt and wait till I can get some sort of corroboration. Yeah. Serpo. 
That's one of my favorite. Or the the John Edmonds case where he took his samurai sword and sliced a piece of alien uh, off and sent it off to Levengood where it disappeared. That's another one that I kind of scratched my head about. Right, yeah. I, for the most part, I find that people are very reluctant to come forward with their stories. And having interviewed a lot of people, I think for the most part that hoaxes are pretty darn rare. That has just been my experience as an investigator. <laughs> just go to those Hawaiian Brothers uh, <laughs> YouTube channel. You'll get more than you could possibly ever imagine. Oh, the, the photographic stuff. Yeah, and that's a problem. <laughs> Photographs used to be really good evidence, like you know, the Trinidad Island photographs or the the Trent, the McMinnville photographs or a bunch of really interesting photographic cases, which I think still stand up. But now, if you get a photograph of a UFO, you better darn well have some other witnesses who saw you take that photo and are willing to stand behind you. Yeah, I agree. But, uh, okay, here's, here's one from a... Uh, a fairly new member of the forum uh, where we post questions for our guests at forum.theparacast.com. So come on, listeners, uh, get your questions in for us. Well, assuming that the UFO phenomenon is not ET, I would like to ask Mr. Dennett how he feels how an ET visitation contact scenario would unfold. Is it fair to assume it would run similar to what we have seen these past 70 years or so? That's kind of a weird question. Well, let's consider it not real, but... If it does happen, would it happen the same way that unreality happens? Um, I'm yeah, not sure I mean, I can answer that. Well, I think that when we think about ETs contacting humans, we still haven't had open official contact with the public at large. Not really. Yes, maybe they've contacted, you know, Edwards Air Force Base. There was that meeting, that rumor with Eisenhower, and I think there's this sort of assumption that we have that "take me to your leader" kind of mentality. Why haven't they landed on the White House lawns sort of thing? Um, it's really hard to say how ET contact would officially take place or how this all went down even. We still don't entirely know. I think that to a certain extent, that's what they were doing when they flew over the White House in the 1950s, uh, 52, and I believe again in 54 or something around there. Uh, really dramatic cases where, I mean, they're right over Washington, D.C., airspace, putting on what appears to be a display, saying, here we are. And what did we do? We chased after them. And there are photographs. Right. So I think that that's how, I mean, I think if we were a different society, ET contact would have happened very differently. They could have just landed and, you know, come out and we'd shake hands. But well, we're a know, warring maybe. society. Maybe maybe we're seeing it right now. Maybe Trump's an ET with a bad toupee, and actually, if you pulled his mask off, he'd have almond-shaped eyes and be bald. Or reptilian, even. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of the TV show V. Right, yeah. A Childhood's End. Oh, oh yes, think... A Childhood's End. I didn't like the TV version of it, Childhood's End. I don't know. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty scary. They... they kind of went straight from the book, unfortunately. Well, I but, saw uh, yeah, a few areas where it was different, but still. I think there is some evidence to say that ETs are walking among us. That's one of the chapters in my book, Not From Here. Okay, let's go e into that then. All right, let's hit that. Now, obviously, there is some skepticism on my part and Chris's as to what might be walking amongst us. But all right, if ET is here... Would we recognize them, or would they look like anybody else? I mean, it would be a guy who wears a, a hat and has kind of long, light brown hair with a beard. <laughs> um, well, the cases that I put together involve a variety of ETs, some that look very close to human, some that look straight up gray or are in some sort of a disguise. Um, people are reporting having seen some of these really strange-looking figures uh, in public places like uh, bookstores, gas stations, convenience stores, uh, casinos. There's a whole group of casino encounters. I think one of my favorite is comes from Bruce Lee, who's the editor of uh, Whitley Strieber's book, Communion. 
Okay, we're and, not talking about the Bruce Lee that we remember then. No, not the karate guy. This is an editor who worked for Morrow Books and says that he was in New York and saw this bookstore and wanted to go check out the new display of communion, went inside and saw these figures standing right up next to the display, picking up a book. And he said what was really bizarre is they were completely covered from head to toe in you know, clothes and hats and giant sunglasses. You couldn't really see any of their skin at all. And they were holding up one of these books and speed reading it and, and saying, oh, this part is wrong, that part is wrong, and this sort of thing. And he was, oh, interesting. So he walks up to them, and he says that they were not human. One turned look and looked at him and had the largest set of eyes he's ever seen, and it just w were not human eyes. They were almond-shaped and enormous. And uh, he got this very strong kind of reaction that uh, they did not want him there at all. That was the impression he said he got. And he says it shook him up really bad, and uh, that they did not look like people. I think he'd spent too many editing sessions on Whitley's book. <laughs> perhaps, knows? perhaps, but you know, he's okay. not, not where, the only one who says come, that. Where do you come down on the uh, the David Jacobs idea of hubrids, where now we have uh, abductees who are being tasked with? Uh, helping uh, alien uh, human hybrids uh, shop at Walmart, balance their checkbook, check out library books, that sort of thing. Does that have any sort of ring to you? Uh, I don't have a lot of cases like that personally. Um, so it's hard for me to say. I've certainly talked to a number of abductees, um, and a number of them do feel that there are hybrids walking among us and uh, have seen them. But as far as teaching them and aiding and abetting sort of this invasion, uh, no, I don't have a lot of that. I, th I think David Jacobs takes a pretty dim view of the future of humanity and that we're going to be absorbed by the ETs. But I, I don't know if that's what's going to happen. I think we've already been absorbed. The evidence is that they've been manipulating us genetically for a very long time. And uh, if they wanted to invade, they could have. Uh, I think we're I mean, the fact that e some ETs look just like us and are apparently interbreeding with us, this has to raise serious questions about human origins and who we really are. Well, well, why haven't we heard of any scientific evidence, some, some genetic evidence to back that up? You said the word evidence. Uh, what would uh, constitute evidence? Wouldn't it be some sort of unusual off-planet uh, DNA or some sort of uh, genetic information that would be... Uh, you know, irrefutable? I think that's probably coming. Uh, I don't think we have it right now, irrefutable F DNA evidence of an ET. Uh, no, but what we do have is a lot of reports of people, of these hybrids, a lot of reports of genetic material being taken, reports stretching back into history of this sort of thing, of humans mating with supernatural beings, with the gods, so to speak, of people coming from outer space and landing and teaching us, you know, agriculture and things like this. That turns up in a lot of Native American cultures and elsewhere. Let's do our break here, and I have a couple of questions for you. Preston Dennett with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. You are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that too in Graphic Converter. Also print catalogs. Convert from so many 
formats I can't even list them. Download now to see if Graphic Converter is good for you, like one and a half million other users. Guess what? You could save money when you buy Graphic Converter. Use the coupon code NIGHTOWL. Use the coupon code NIGHTOWL to get a special price for Graphic Converter. Go to LemkeSoft.com. That's L-E-M-K-E Soft.com. LemkeSoft.com. L-E-M-K-E Soft.com. Paid non attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. By now you know that wireless technology like cell phones do in fact pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blockit Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. This is David Cordani, CEO of Cigna. For more than 20 years, Cigna has worked with the March of Dimes to address premature births in the U.S. Premature births cause horrible suffering and cost billions of dollars each year. That's why Cigna is committed to raising funds and awareness through our employees, family, and friends to improve the health of moms and babies. Please join us in supporting the March for Babies. Start your team today at marchforbabies.org. My computer is so slow, it's making me crazy. I used to have that problem. Did you quit using a computer or or did you buy a new one? No, I called Geeks on Site. They made an appointment to visit my home and showed up the same day. You mean they didn't ask you to bring your computer to a shop? That's what happened when I called a support company. Geeks on Site can go to your home or business or even repair your computer online. They have 24-7 emergency service. If you're having problems with your PC or Mac, call Geeks on Site. 1-800-591-1682. Our friendly certified computer repair experts are available 24-7. Call now for a free diagnosis, 1-800-591-1682. Data recovery, virus removal, and maintenance for all laptops, desktops, printers, and networks. That's Geeks on Site for friendly certified computer repair experts, available 24-7 over the phone or in your home or business. Just call 1-800-591-1682. That's 1-800-591-1682. 1-800-591-1682. 1682. You've seen crazy diets to lose weight. At GCN Team, our healthy body weight loss system simply neutrifies the body, bringing down cravings. It has been proven that nutritional deficiencies drive appetite for carbs, sugars, and fats. Lose weight the easy way. Find us at GCNteam.com or call 877-878-4203. Fighting cravings is a fool's game. Give the body what it needs to be satisfied. Again, 877-878-4203. That's 877-878-4203. Hi, this is Tracy Torme, screenwriter, producer. You're listening to Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Okay, Preston Dennett, author of Not From Here and loads of other books. All right, we got genetic materials, we've got hybrids, we've got all these creatures running amongst us. As Chris is already saying, where's the evidence? It's very easy now to grab DNA evidence and not expensive to test it. It doesn't take that long. And with all the abductions that we've had, all these cases of alleged ETs running about, why isn't there any evidence of who or what they are? Well, I mean, there is an enormous amount of evidence that they're here. Excuse me, we know something's here. We don't know what it is. Well, I think the most popular theory is extraterrestrial. It's certainly not the only theory. I mean, we've heard everything from interdimensional beings to time travelers and uh, shapeshifters, or what have you. I think that the ET theory by far fits the evidence best. And uh, I think it's my assessment at this point that that's what we're dealing with. Now, do we have genetic evidence 
of them? No, we don't. That's not necessarily as easy to get as you might think. Because when these guys walk into your house, they're the ones who are in control. They are shutting down neighborhoods when they abduct people. There was a really good case of that, of a, gosh, what was his name? The Triangle Abduction by Bill Foster. That's right. In North Carolina, they found out that when they had their missing time experience, there was a power failure and a communications blackout uh, in that whole area where they were taken. Bud Hopkins has a number of cases where people have had whole neighborhoods shut down. I've seen, in my own experience, some cases where people are having a UFO encounter, and there's nobody on the road suddenly. And all the houses around, all their lights are off. And they're trying to wake up their partner or their children, and these people cannot be woken up. So my point is, reason that we don't have better evidence, particularly of genetics or an ET body, is because they're very much on top of things. Their ability to control and power over us is pretty darn impressive. I mean, Okay, so the reason that we don't have the evidence is that they are manipulating us in such a way that we can't get that evidence, right? I think that's absolutely true to a certain extent because they could end this cover-up overnight if they wanted to. That still assumes that everything is as you say. Um, absolutely. I mean, well, I don't think the UFOs are going away. The National UFO Reporting Service and MUFON get dozens of reports daily. That means at any given point on this planet, there are UFOs visiting us right now. So that's what we're dealing with. It's a very elusive, slippery phenomena. It seems to be escalating. It's hard to say, but we're seeing stuff like the Mexico City wave, the Topanga Canyon wave, the Phoenix Lights, the Hudson Valley wave, Gulf Breeze, Withville, Virginia, I mean, the Belgian wave. It goes on and on and on. There's going to be another wave of sightings. There's going to be another set of photographs, more landing traces, and the evidence is building. Evidence is conclusive in my mind. Within the public arena, there's plenty to prove that ETs are visiting us right now. There's evidence that something's visiting us, uh, whether it's off-planet or not. I, I, I still think that particular scenario is unproven. Yeah, well, I think, like I said, it's the best theory. Um, you can talk about interdimensional travelers or time travelers or things like this. Try not to speculate. It's so easy to speculate in this field. We don't know where they come from. Certainly, people have asked them, and they've given different responses. Zeta Reticula and the whole Betty Star map, we've heard that um, a number of times. Um, that's not. That comes from a number of different sources, actually. Uh, I think the Hill Star map is a red herring. I think it's ridiculous because we're talking here about creatures who are very far advanced, traveling from one star system to another, and they've got a star map. Give me a break. Yeah, well, we're making assumptions. We're kind of stuck with the stories, and there are a lot of accounts that sort of echo uh, Betty Hill's account. Other people have seen that exact sort of thing. But that doesn't um, prove what they are. It only proves that something is happening. And I think this is where the argument we make about all this is that, yes, we know there is a phenomenon. Yes, we know people are having some perfectly strange things happening to them. But I also wonder when it comes to abductions, or at least some abductions, the experience may not be physical. It may be something that's happening in their subconscious they may be interacting with an external force, but I th we don't see the physical evidence at all. I think there's no doubt it's physical, at least to a certain extent. I mean, we know people are being scarred by this physically. There's a, Well, they're scarred emotionally, certainly. Yeah, and there's hundreds of cases of people who have been injured, a good hundred plus cases of people who have been healed. And I mean, we know it's physical, whether or not it's manifesting in some bizarre way or whether this is some sort of, you know, Jacques Vallée theory of a phenomena that takes on different masks and tracks cultures and this sort of thing. Well, that's certainly possible. We don't know exactly what we're dealing with. 